is a special presentation of ESPN on ABC. Welcome to College Football, presented by Best Buy. It's the Texas A&M Aggies against the Red Raiders of Texas Tech. A beautiful day on the South Plains. We are preparing for kickoff, which is just moments away. We'll be back with Lubbock in a moment. Well, all glory flapping in the breeze, and the breeze is growing. And it's not a surprise because on the South Plains of West Texas, it blows frequently, 22 miles an hour right now. And earlier reports this week said it might get even higher than that. Low humidity, the forecast for sunny and windy. AM won the toss, they have deferred. And it will be Texas Tech's offense that we will see first this afternoon. Szymanski prepares to kick it off, and this one is underway. And with the wind behind him and also a strong leg, he boots that thing completely out of the end zone. Let's go down to the sideline and Jack Aru. Jack? Well, Ron, it's one thing to prepare for a big game. It's another when there's a cloud of controversy hanging over your head coach. That's what the Aggies of A&M faced for the last two weeks. Coach Dennis Francioni being investigated for the CoachFran.com inquiry that took, started about two weeks ago. I talked to him this week, and he said, look, we'll take whatever comes our way. It has not been a distraction to him or to his players. He said the most important thing we wanted to do is get ready for this game. Okay, Jack, we look forward to hearing from you this afternoon. First play from scrimmage as Tech will go from their own 20-yard line. And you see the splits with the offensive linemen and wide receivers all over the field. Graham Harrell is the quarterback. Junior out of Ennis, Texas. And it, they're going to get a delay of game penalty to start the contest. Well, Texas Tech is the most penalized team in college football, so what better way to start for them? <laughs> Someone just asked in the truck, is that better than wasting a timeout? <laughs> I, I don't know. We'll find out uh, after this first uh, three down series. Aggies show blitz. They go with a three man rush, and it's a running play. Shannon Woods, and he will have the five yards that they lost on the penalty. Now let's take a look at the Texas Tech starting offense presented by Best Buy. And here is three time Grammy nominee Pat Green. The Texas Tech offense is led by quarterback Graham Harrell, number one quarterback in the nation, that is. Anyway, 28 touchdowns in the last six games. 17 of those going to Michael Crabtree, a freshman phenom there. Uh, big boys up front are averaging around 330 pounds. That's about 100 pounds more than I, and I'm a big old boy myself. But uh, our big boy, Ryland Reed, has a 565-pound school record bench press. Okay, Pat, thanks very much. He had a concert here on campus last night. And right now, let's take a look at the Texas A&M defensive starters. Here's safety, Devin Gregg. The starting defense for the Aggie record crew today features up front, big red Joseph Bryant at linebacker, big play Mark Dodge, who has a nose for the ball, and at corner, the speed demon, Danny Gore, and at safety, me, Devin Gregg. <laughs> All right, Devin. So it's a first down for Texas Tech as they pick it up out at the 30-yard line. Harold with what appears to have had an audible on every play so far. Then they keep it on the ground again, but a short gain by Shannon Woods. Now here is today's X Factor presented by City. Well, Texas A&M almost got out last year with a win at home against Texas Tech by shrinking the clock. And when they go on offense, we talked about it at the top, lane left, lane right, lane once again. They only ran him twice against Miami, and I think they learned their lesson there. Of course, we'll see McGee and Goodson as well. But for Texas Tech, on when they're on defense, they need to forget about the pass. A&M is going to try to pound them. I think they can play a three-man defensive backfield, get eight men in the box, and dare Stephen McGee to beat him with his arm today, especially in this win. On second down, Harold under pressure, gets the pass away and has it complete to Edward Britton. And that's going to be a gain of to the 35 yard line. So it'll be third down and they'll need about five as Misi Toupe comes in to make the stop. Graham Harrell who leads the country of course up near 75 percent. The one thing the coaches talked about 
He improved as a leader, but he also really improved in his accuracy. When he gets on a roll, he puts the ball on very small points on receivers' bodies, which give them a key where they should turn to pick up the extra yardage. Third down line to make is the 40. Sean Burns, the offensive center, 6'4", 303 pounds. They keep it on the ground again, surprisingly, a gain of only a yard and a half. Kellen Hurd, number 91, a sophomore out of Wharton, Texas, is there to make the stop for the Aggies. And it's going to be a fourth down situation. Are you surprised at the conservative nature uh, for the start of this ballgame by Mike Leach? A little bit, but that wind is right into their face. And I know that Leach told us this is only the 12th punt of the season for Texas Tech, but right into the face of that wind, I don't think that they wanted to risk you know you've got the nerves going sometimes the ball comes out a little funny and into the wind you could have thrown a pick so great maybe point. the right way to go great point Jonathan LaCour gets the boot away and this is a really good kick into the wind caught at the 25 missed tackle 30 35 and it is Peterson who will bring it out to the 37 yard line now let's take a look at the Texas A&M starting offense presented by Best Buy. Here was offensive lineman Kirk Elder. The starting offense for the Aggies today is led by our fearless leader, Stephen McGee, quarterback, one of my best friends, one of the toughest guys I've ever played with. He's going to be handing the ball off to Cheeseburger Eddie. I call him Dvorsky Lane, all 350 pounds of them. And all those guys are protected by the big good lookings up front. And of that group, the best looking one of them all, Chris Yoder, senior, my roommate for four years. All right. Chris Yoder. And we've got a holding call that went against the Aggies, and for some reason the officials very slow in marking off this penalty. You know, we're talking so much about the pass, and of course, Ruffin McNeil, who was elevated the defensive coordinator for Texas Tech, trying to get them to play a little more aggressively. I wouldn't be surprised early with the wind at their back if Dennis Franchoni doesn't decide to do a little play action to Lane and try to get one over the top. Wouldn't be surprised. You're exactly right. We do have a little reversal of fortunes here to begin this ball game. Tech picked up one first down and then wound up having to punt. And now the Aggies scrimmage for their own. 27 yard line. Lane. And he will have a couple. Now let's take a look at the Texas Tech defensive starters. Here once again is Pat Green. The Texas Tech run defense has been turned up a notch by new defensive coordinator Ruffin McNeil. Rajon Henley and freshman Colby Whitlock are the tackles out there. Linebacker Brian Duncan has. Uh, led in tackles the last two games in a row. Way to go, Brian. Safety Joe Garcia and Darcel McBath are looking out for the long ball. Go get him, Red Raiders. Okay, thanks, Pat Green. Second down, we'll call it about seven and a half yards. And it's Goodson who's in the ball game. They fake to him. The roll to the right by McGee, and he's got a big gainer. Close to a first down. In fact, he'll have it at the 38-yard line as Paul Williams comes over to corral him for the Red Raiders. And let's go down to the sideline and check in with Jack Aru. Jack. Well, Ron, you were talking about Ruffin McGill taking over as interim defensive coordinator. He is an excitable character, and we visited with him yesterday. We were told that he likes to use one-liners to challenge his team for his defense. I asked him just before the game, all right, what did you say to your D? He said, Jack's real simple. Line them up quick, run, and hit. <laughs> all right. Well, we'll see if they're able to accomplish that. Chris Alexander, number 24 in the game, has the fullback, and he's out front blocking for Goodson. And Goodson tripped up on a nice defensive play. Chris Parker, from his cornerback spot, saved what could have been a nice gainer for AM. Of course, that change was made. Lyle Settencich, who's dealing with some issues with the health of his wife and had a lot of things going on, but the whole thing with Ruffin McNeil that Mike Leach wanted was a change in attitude. And the one thing that Ruffin did right when he started that Sunday after the Oklahoma State game was simplify. Take some things out of the package. He said, clear minds equal fast legs. And you're going to see the Red Raiders attack the line of scrimmage. It, it, it'll look like a blitz, but it'll just be them running downhill towards the ball. Well, this time the Aggies come out with four wide receivers. The lone setback is Gibson, and they pitch it to him on an option. 45, 
at the 50 and spins away from one more tackler and he's loose inside the 40 and down to the 39 yard line and what do we say about Goodson what a great second third and fourth effort on the play well when you have to share this many carries watch the block here by Pierre Brown downfield just excellent job of locking up with Chris Parker gets a little pancake there but you know that competition is healthy when you have to share carries all these guys at 60 and 70 yards per game they're going to make each one of them count as much as they can that was a gain of 20 yards and that flips the field now big number 11 Jaworski Lane checks in a tailback and they'll give it to him tries the right nothing there looks to the left still fighting his way and it'll be a gain of about four so he just takes a mass of humanity with him Darcel McBath the free safety for the Red Raiders comes up and the first man to make contact now this is one of the things that you and I talked about a lot yesterday Jack included and you mentioned in the open this is one way to combat Texas Tech as far as keeping that offense idle and off the field by running the first the, the football and picking up first down Dennis Franchoni said there's no question what our formula is going to be coming into this game but we have to get points out of it too because just yeah. holding the ball is not going to be enough Bennett in motion. McGee, 25, down to the 22 and a half yard line. Paul Williams on the stop, and the Aggies now with a 14 yard gain after the 20 yard burst by Goodson and a very relentless and determined on the ground drive by Texas AM. And watch Brian Duncan come off the edge here. It's a reverse option. McGee comes out, spins. He's got to get to the pitch man. You've got to get that ball out of McGee's hands. And Duncan took a bad angle, and McGee got right back underneath of it. Of course, Duncan just a freshman, and Coach Ruffin kn knows that that guy who's got the pitch man has got to get the ball out of the quarterback's hand. He can't miss him. On first down, Lane has five, has ten, pushes the pile for maybe 11 yards on the play. Joe Garcia from a strong safety position there to make the tackle. Good blocking up front by Elder. Wallace and also Chris Yoder. Yeah, excellent. Elder's going to pull around right up into that hole and just smack the linebacker. And he, it's, what he does, it's really nice. He has a wide base. And he swallows up the linebacker, Paul Williams, and Lane just cuts right off of it. Big body on smaller body. All you got to do is lock it up. First down, Kendora Smith checks into the backfield. Number 26. Alexander inside the five and he's down to the four and A&M has not come close to having negative yardage on anything the first play was a gain of only two but since then they haven't looked back and one thing I noticed right away we looked at the Oklahoma State film from last week and the offensive line was allowing a lot of penetration it seems like they've shored that up they spent the week working on their zone scheme this is zone blocking option scheme I would expect another option here why not down in the red zone. Jaworski Lane in the backfield they give it to him right side tries to push the pile and still fighting he'll take it to the one yard line Marlon Williams holding on for dear life and Tech thought they had him stopped but he just kept driving and pumping those huge legs and he took it down and let, I'm going to say inside the one yard line well it was no accident that Lane set the a and M rushing touchdown record last year with 19 when he gets down around the goal line he's not just a big bowling ball he he's very active on his feet and now this close well, why not lane again right behind the center well I don't think there's any mystery as to who's <laughs> going to get the ball there's lane and there's an A&M touchdown So Texas A&M has their first offensive series of the afternoon after holding Texas Tech to only one first down and they keep it on the ground exclusively and they have a six to nothing lead. Szymanski tries to make it a seven to nothing ball game and he does. So let's take a time out and as we head to commercial one more look at the large Jaworski lane as he takes it in for the touchdown at right guard at Texas A&M on a good looking opening drive is on top. 
Joe, you look at Javorski Lane on the sidelines getting a breather. A one yard run on his part. But look at the drive, folks. An average of 7.3 per try. The elapsed time, 5.01. I'll tell you, if they can run at that kind of clip, we may not see a forward pass today. Why would they? McGee had the rollout, but and didn't even throw it but in a weird way you almost think Mike Leach likes the fact that the first quarter shrunk down so fast I think that he wants to get his offense with the wind behind them as soon as possible see the numbers on uh, coach Leach seven consecutive bowl appearances Stephen McGee on the far sideline masterfully directing that attack by the Aggies and it took a little wind out of the sails of this capacity house here at Jones AT&T Stadium Another high end over end. It's going to go five yards deep, and they're going to return it. And this is Lewis. And Lewis is going to be stopped, barely getting across the 10 yard line. Let's take a look at that touchdown and talk about pad level. You hear that all the time. Leverage in football is so important. Watch when the offensive line fires out. They get the defensive line to stand up. And then watch what Lane does right at the end. See all the pads way up here? Look how low Lane gets his pads. And at 200 and listed 68 pounds, when the offensive line, they don't even have to get movement necessarily. Just get the energy of the defensive line going up, and then you pound right behind him with a guy who gets his pads extremely low. Well, Darren Lewis is the man on top at 44, but Jaborski is peeking around the corner at him at 39 touchdowns. So Tech takes over with very poor field position on what appeared to be not the best decision in the world to come out from five yards deep in the end zone. Pass thrown complete at the 15 and out to the 20 is Michael Crabtree. So the first time that we have seen him today. And let's go down to the sideline and check in with Jack again. Well, Ron, you were talking about the wind at about 20 to 25 miles an hour. It has begun to gust just a little bit. But Mike Leach told us yesterday that the wind, kind of like when you play on a local golf course, because they practice in it and they practice inside this stadium, they know some of the nuances, Simon, kind of local course knowledge. With that kind of wind, the ball tends to lift just a little bit. They know it. Do the Aggies know it? They may not have to show it, you know. <laughs> Here's a running play that's going to pick up the first down with Shannon Woods. So the second first down of the afternoon for the Red Raiders. That's a gain of 11. And Jordan Pugh with his second tackle of the afternoon for a &M. It was interesting yesterday when we were talking with Mike Leach about that exact thing. He said 25 mile an hour wind is about a normal day at the office. But if it gusts up to 35 or 40, then you've got to start thinking about it. And we asked him about playing against AM. He said, you know, since they were a running team, I'd almost rather it be still because it's not going to affect them very much, but it may affect us. It's Britain in motion. Running play goes to the smallest guy on the field, Kobe Lewis. Kobe's a sophomore out of Abilene. And folks, they list him at 5'6", and that might be generous. Because when he walks into the huddle, well, there won't really be a huddle, but around those offensive linemen, you'll see, he is totally overshadowed by that. And they had already offered him a scholarship before they saw him in person. They'd only seen him on tape in high school, and he showed up to one of their camps, and all the coaches thought... Uh, he's a little smaller than we thought he was, but we'll, get, we'll honor that scholarship, and they're glad they did. So it's second down and 10. Aggies lead it on an early touchdown. touchdown. Blitz is coming. Got a pass over the middle and in and out of the hands of Crabtree. Just a little bit tall and a dangerous miss because those kind of tips are taken back for six. Yeah, and this was a little bit of a short arm by the young wide receiver. Let's not forget that Crabtree did not play wide receiver in high school. So this is his first year of true action at receiver. And I think he heard some footsteps. 5-13 left to play opening quarter. It is a third down and 10. Texas Tech needs to take it to their own 41-yard line. Harrell throws a low ball, throws it complete. It's going to be two yards short of the first down. Matt Leiner, let's check in with you. Hi there, Matt Weiner here in New York. I'll let you know what's happening around the country throughout the game. Let's begin with this Taco Bell update from Happy Valley. P.J. Hill fumbled Wisconsin's first snap from scrimmage. Matt Hahn converts three plays later. Penn State now leading at 10-0. A great Saturday start after a very difficult week. Thanks, Matt. Nittany Lions up 10 to nothing over Wisconsin in the early going. Tough in Nittany Valley. LaCour in for his second punt and a few scattered boos from the crowd. They'd like to see Texas Tech open it up just a little bit more. 
Here's the boot. Good kick into the wind. And in fact, it's going to go over the head of the deep man and is going to go inside the 10, still rolling. And I'd like to know exactly what happened on that. There was no attempt to catch the football by Jordan Peterson. And the Aggies are... Well, this that happened well after the ball went over his head. When we come back, we'll talk more about it. You're watching ESPN on ABC. Discover something good for nature and your home. From energy efficient appliances to water saving shower heads, the Home Depot's Eco Options program makes it easier to find thousands of alternatives with less impact on the environment. And to celebrate October as Energy Month, save 10% on select Energy Star qualified appliances, windows, patio doors, and more. Save energy, save money. Learn how at the Home Depot. I was sitting in a restaurant with uh, my girlfriend. We were going to meet her her boss and her boss's fiance. I'd never met either, but she couldn't remember the fiance's name. And they were coming in like three minutes. And then I, I said, wait, it's on their wedding website. So I took the iPhone out under the table and I was like pulling up the wedding website and just scrolled down to see the name. That's it. So just then we got up and we just, you know, we confidently introduced ourselves. You know, her boss and fiance don't know that I don't remember their names. I think it was Meredith. Nissan Titan is a strategic vision total quality award leader. It's also the only truck tough enough to deliver college football's most coveted award. The Heisman, brought to you by the Nissan Titan. Ah! This presentation of college football brought to you by Best Buy. For a complete home theater experience, get HD done right at Best Buy. The Nissan Titan, proud presenter of the 2007 Heisman. And DLP HDTV. DLP is the official ESPN on ABC HD telecast sponsor of college football. So we're back at Lubbock, Texas, still trying to figure out exactly what happened. Peterson just let the ball go over his head, and he's looking away from the sun. So, yeah, it, and, it, he, and he has to know that that ball is going to hang up because of the wind. Yeah. Uh, he saw a flat kick, and if it was a normal day, it may have gotten into the end zone. But uh, he definitely should have come up and made a play on that. Because now his teammates are going to be scrimmaging from inside their own 10-yard line. So maybe a little miss in communication, and we'll see if the Aggies uh, come away from it unscathed. Seven to nothing, Texas A&M on top. Their opening drive, not one pass play. Everything on the ground. The drive was 73 yards. Lane will take it out to around the 12-yard line. Kobe Whitlock is there to make the stop, and let's check in again with Jack Aroot. Well, while the offense for the Red Raiders was on the field, Ruffin McNeil decided he was going to take full advantage of this time to challenge his team. I guess you could call it challenge. I think he was chewing them out. The main key factor that he was displeased with, fellas, was the way, the lackadaisical way his defense would line up. He shouted and exercised them to get lined up quicker. We'll see if they do. Well, the other thing, Jack, you cannot be haphazardly trying to tackle Jaborski Lane. You simply won't stop him that way. McGee looks to the left and back to the right. Got a man all alone, and speaking of Bennett, there he is, and out to the 30-yard line, and the big tight end will have the Aggie first down. Their initial pass of the day, and they throw it wide open completion. Well, and once you get that running game going, it's so hard to start to find all of the guys because you're thinking, come downhill, come downhill. The safety goes to bail to the middle. It's a cover three, and there's no backside corner because they had rolled everyone over to the strong side of the formation, and Bennett is wide open. Give credit to McGee, though. He never looked back nope. to his right until he had absolutely studied the entire left side of the field. And obviously, he was faking to influence the defense. Reverses out. McGee's going to keep it. 30, 35, and he'll step out of bounds at around the 39 as Chris Parker was coming over to force him. 
Well they're always talking to Stephen McGee about not taking hits and this time he did a really nice job when he was rolling out there. Everyone was covered and Joey Thomas was his lower receiver on the two routes to that side as he rolled out and he pointed to Thomas turn around and block <laughs> let me just get out of bounds. That was a nice job. You know one of the things also that we talked about in trying to break down this ball game yesterday and today and that is that the Aggies could not start slowly because they don't have the type of offense that can put a bunch of points back quickly if they do fall behind. They're doing anything but today and they Texas Tech needs to be careful of this per play average that they've got going. Second pass it is complete and there's Lane puts a head down and drives the defender three more yards down the field. That's Marlon Williams and folks that will move the chains again. Well that is you're talking about the slow starts for A&M. Think about at Miami they go down 24 nothing at half make it a little more competitive in the second half but that game just looked like a bit of a mismatch and then of course last week at home against Oklahoma State going down 17 nothing and it was Javorski Lane who took over the game in the second half had his first receiving touchdown in that ball game last week he has very very soft hands you saw it there it's it's an effort effortless deal when he goes to catch it Stephen McGee two of two on the afternoon for 25 yards option play to the open side pitches it back that's Gibson the speed man and Gibson close to the first down as he'll take it across midfield to around the 46 Joe Garcia the strong safety who is considered one of the best hitters in that tech secondary is over there to finally make the stop and the Red Raiders with the player who is down it looks like Brian Duncan a red shirt freshman out of Baton Rouge who is shaken up on the play so we'll take a timeout. Two minutes and 20 seconds left in his opening quarter. Seven to nothing. Texas A&M. Today's AT&T All-America flashback. Carson Palmer. In 2002, this four-year starter led the Trojans to an 11-2 record, piloting the team to a victory in the Orange Bowl and earning the game's MVP. The breakout All-American finished his senior season with 33 TDs and almost 4,000 passing yards on his way to capturing the Heisman Trophy. Text vote to 87654 now on your AT&T wireless. up the bucks and pick up their teams enterprise salutes ncaa student athletes for picking us all up pick enterprise we'll pick you up showtime cavemen a new comedy tuesday 8 7 central on abc so we're back brian duncan walked off the field under his own power Chris Yoder was shaken up, and this young man, Michael Schumar, number 76, has come in at guard, replacing him. On second down and short, here's a pitch reverse, and they got blockers in front. 30, loses the ball, and it is recovered at the 27-yard line. So a little trickeration, if you will. Roger Holland is the man who came around and took the pitch on the reverse. And here's Holland right here. And at the very end, he scared his coaches <laughs> along with Walsh. himself. Yeah. I'll tell you how balanced this attack has been. The rushing balance, McGee, 31 yards. Goodson, 31 yards. Lane, 27 yards. Now you have to throw Roger Holland in there as well. A guy who wasn't even listed on the depth chart. And it's the option. They ran the option to the left and brought Holland all the way back around. And Texas Tech had flown down the line of scrimmage in pursuit and we're out of position. Goodson and he takes a spin and goes to the 23 at a half yard line. A reminder the NASCAR Nextel Cup Series continues at the Bank of America 500 in Charlotte on ABC tonight. Coverage begins at 7 Eastern with NASCAR Countdown. For more information log on to ESPN.com. Big night up in Charlotte. You know everyone keeps talking about Jeff Gordon and Jimmy Johnson being a two man race but everybody forgets that last year Jimmy Johnson was down one hundred and fifty six points and it was actually at Lowe's Motor Speedway that he won and got on the run that got him the championship so a lot of people think this thing may be over but all you have to do is look at recent history of Jimmy Johnson the things far from over no, there's a lot of racing left to be done Jaborski Lane back in the game at tailback they fake it to him and he's got his tight end open over the middle 
overthrows on the far sideline Pierre Brown. But I'll tell you, Martellus Bennett had broken free beyond the safety on the left side of the field, and McGee had looked away. And really the first hit of the game that McGee has taken. Brandon Williams, the defensive end, came free right at the end and got a nice shot. But usually with 47 seconds left in the first quarter, you'd expect McGee to take some shots. And now Ruffin McNeil has the first important third down of this game. He hasn't brought much pressure. Don't expect it here because of the running game of a &M. This is the first time the Aggies have had to play a third down play offensively in this first half. Third down, they need to take it to the 12 yard line. McGee steps up, throws, almost intercepted, and the pass is knocked away. Chris Parker is the man who cut in front, the senior out of Dallas Sunset. And of course, Kerry Franks is who they wanted. And let's go down to Jack Aroot. Well, Ron, let's update you on the condition of Chris Yoder, their strong guard for the Texas AM Aggies who left. It is a right knee. Now, he wears knee braces like most linemen on both knees. He's tried to shake it off. The athletic trainers have looked him over. But right now, every time he tries to get down in a stance, he gets stiff-legged. They need him. He's the backup center, Ed. Says Mansky to attempt a 41-yard field goal. Good pass. Plenty of distance, and he's wide left. No good. Now we will see with 36 ticks on the clock left here in this opening quarter momentum if this is a shift as far as finally getting a defensive stop by the Red Raiders. And that was just great defensive back play by Chris Parker. He read that thing the whole way and made a great break on the ball and uh, knocked it down. But Zemanski, the kicker for Texas A&M has really been struggling outside of 30 yards. He's now 6 for 12 when he has to kick outside of 30 yards. As they go down the stretch, very difficult schedule. They're going to have to start getting more productivity out of Zemanski. Graham Harrell back on the field for his third offensive series. We had movement by the defense, and then big number 74, Ryland Reed, took a half step back as well. Well, the offensive coaches from Texas Tech Still first now. having a good word with the line judge over here, as they should. The defender was in the neutral zone. He was in the neutral zone. You're exactly right. Yeah, this should have been, I think, yep, that that should have been. That's Cyril Obazor in the neutral zone. And the offensive player is allowed to move if the defender across from him comes across. I think that should have been on Texas A&M. So it's first down and 15. Another flag is down, and Harold gets it out, safety bow to Woods, and Woods is going to be stopped as he crosses the 20-yard line. So it'll wind up being a gain of two until we find out who uh, the flag is against. Aerial formation on the offense, number 67. Nine up here on the line, five-yard penalty. Repeat first down. Well, we were looking at the statistics before the game, and Texas Tech is the number one penalized team in the NCAA. But with the number one offense, I was wondering what would happen when you took those away. Well, they are so good offensively. If you took off the nearly 100 yards of penalties off of their offensive total, they're still the 10th best offense in the country. So very productive. And you know what the call is there? That is against the right tackle who is not up on the ball on the line of scrimmage. Yeah, the rule is the helmet of the offensive linemen have to break the waistband Waste, yeah. of the center. And a lot of times when you have a speed rusher outside of you as an offensive tackle, you want to get back away from him as far as possible. How many times have we seen this year when a good jump by a defensive end, he goes right by them? So the discussion continues. They're going to bring the ball over to the near hash. Well, the key is the waist of the center. Watch when he bends over. The helmets have to break Sean Burns' waist. I'll tell you, he's off the ball again. If, if they're going to if they're going to split hairs on this thing, well, they didn't call it. Pass complete over the middle, close to the first down. 
A&M thought the ball came free. It is short of the first down by one. Amendola with his first catch of the afternoon. That is the end of the opening quarter. So we're going to take a timeout. And if someone had written a script on this one or prognosticated exactly what would have happened, it certainly would not have been this way. The Aggies with a really fine job offensively, 7-0. Welcome back to ESPN College Football on ABC, presented by Best Buy. Ron Franklin, Ed Cunningham, Jack Aroot, coming to you from the South Plains of West Texas. We're in Lubbock for a Big 12 meeting between the Texas Aggies 2-0 in conference play against Texas Tech, who is 1-1. A lot of times in a situation like this, you would think third and inside of one, you'd pound it straight ahead, but that's not this offense, so they're still going to spread them out. Texas A&M going with a three down lineman. I would think maybe some type of draw or screen might be a good play here. Rushing yardage in the opening quarter for A&M. 118 yards on 15 carries. Now they're the seventh best in the country, and that's exactly what Dennis Franchoni said the formula was, but uh, they also wanted to be productive. That missed field goal, we should mark that one, because even though they had a good drive, they came away with zero points. Running play as the pitch goes to Woods. And Woods tries to turn the corner. Shoved out of bounds by Devin Gregg, the young man who uh, very skillfully did our starting lineups today for the Aggies. Well, Marlon Wynn got called for being lined up off sides uh, earlier, but this is a really nice hook block by Wynn. Right away against the defensive end. Didn't have to get much of him because the end, Obazor, got inside of him so quickly and the speed of Shannon Woods got to the outside. So it's a first down for Texas Tech as they scrimmage from their own 38 yard line trailing in the ball game seven to nothing. They go with another draw play and let's go down to Jack Aroot. Well Ron one of the things that Graham Harrell admits to is last year when he first got under center he would get rattled he'd make a lot of mistakes. As I watched him on the sidelines in the early going in that first quarter, he didn't get rattled at all. In fact, he just kind of went through things. He kind of settled in his mind. And just now in this series, I noticed that last time, before the officials had not whistled in the 25, se the 24 second clock, he took the advantage of an extra time with his receivers and his running back and checked off. He's much more mature. Well, he's standing, waiting in the pocket all the time of the world this time. Throws it complete, and that's Eric Morris. And Oris with uh, what is close to be the longest pass reception of the day for the Red Raiders. As now, possibly with the wind behind them, feeling a little bit more comfort than they did in that opening quarter. And it's easy to forget that last year there was a time where Graham Harrell was benched during games against Missouri. He had five turnovers in that ball game, two interceptions returned for touchdowns. And the coaches all, when we were talking to him yesterday, he has such command of the offense and he's doing such a better job checking them into good plays this year than last year from the shotgun and it's a shovel pass 45 at the 40 Kobe Lewis again the smallest guy on the field this afternoon at 5'5 170 pounds rambles for the first down Mark Dodge is the man who made the tackle how many times do you see that where a short back it looks like a pass so the defensive linemen get in their lanes and start rushing and he gets lost and they lose sight of Lewis at 5 5 and he bounces out in the lineman downfield of course the ball thrown behind the line of scrimmage so in college football they can block downfield that's a very nice call by Mike Leach Shannon Woods checks back into the ball game at tailback for the Red Raiders and it leads it seven to nothing. Lifts off the corner, pass over the middle. That one is complete to Danny Amendola, the second leading receiver on this football team. Obviously, Crabtree is number one, but these are really the one-two punch, number five and number 20. It's interesting talking to Gary Darnell, the second-year defensive coordinator at Texas A&M, about the study he did of blitz versus no blitz. And he said the problem is it came out almost exactly the same. Teams that brought pressure gave up just as much yardage and points as teams that didn't. That was the first true blitz that Darnell has called, and look what happened. 
Amendola, by the way, his father, also a coach, as is Graham Harrell's father. Pass over the middle, got it complete, and that could, could have gone to any one of two players because Britton cut in front, and I wasn't sure the ball was for him. Well, if it's in the area, you better <laughs> grab it. <laughs> uh, that was funny. The other receiver certainly looking for it. <laughs> well, you don't see a lot of teams that will run trips receivers into the boundary. It's such a small real estate patch over there, but that time Texas Tech had three receivers over there, and it caused confusion, maybe even amongst the Red Raiders. Ninth play of the drive coming up. Harrell throws quickly. This will be a touchdown, Eric Morris. And the Red Raiders are on the board. Trelika with the extra point. He's good. And at the 12 48 mark, we are tied. And as we go to break, Eric Morris, a junior out of Shallow Water, Texas, just south of Lubbock, gets the touchdown. John Saunders in New York with the Sports Center Minute, powered by Vizio. Getting you up to date with the NLCS. Two games of nothing lead now for the Colorado Rockies. Tavares with the bases loaded walk in the 11th. Gives them a 3-2 win. They've now won 19 of their last 20 games. Meanwhile, this afternoon, Kentucky trying to knock off the number one team in the nation. Andre Woodson's pass is tipped. It winds up in the hands of T.C. Drake for two yards. Ron. So we are back in Lubbock. LSU, got to be careful. Wildcats up 7 to nothing. That's one of those kind of games when you have just burned a lot of energy, energy the week before. Mm -hmm. All of those fourth downs that Les Miles went for, a couple of them you look at and think, oh, I don't know if you should go for those. <laughs> but they paid off, and a little bit of a hangover. And, and even though Kentucky struggled last week, boy, that's a really good squad with Andre Woodson. Trelika, line drive kick, and this one is going to go out of the back of the end zone. Well, Misi Toupe, the linebacker, gets himself out of position because of the swing, and when Morris goes and hooks up right there, it's just an excellent job of Graham Harrell taking exactly what he sees. Morris, another one of the mighty mites on this offense that listed 5-7, but it's Graham Harrell doing such a great job. We were just hearing from Jack. He just settled in so nicely at that position. Let me tell you a story. Morris is from shallow water. That's a two way school just south of here. The coaches said they went ahead and invited him to come on the team because he worried them to death. He brought a copy of his game every week. Every week. <laughs> and now they're really glad that they got the kid. Well, they already had Danny Amendola, who's yeah. another just for a 5 9 guy. And they yeah. said, we don't know if we need two, but now they're glad they have them both. Well, let's see if the Aggies can get it going offensively again. Here's Goodson. Bounces it outside. This time is going to be corralled as he gets to the 26 yard line. That's uh, Jamar Wall, a sophomore out of Plainview, Texas, on the tackle. Well, AM, when they were on the road against Miami, completely got out of their plan and did, quite frankly, had to. They were down 24 0 in the first half, but now at 7 7, they can stay in that plan. But I still think that that missed field goal, because they've been so productive. But Coach Franchoni, he knows that they that points have to come with these long drives. They can't just eat clock, they have to score. Schumard, by the way, still in the ball game at right guard, number 76. As McGee rolls the pocket, and the ball is tipped and knocked down. Boy, that's Brian Duncan who got a hand on it. Brian was the young man who was shaken up a little bit earlier, so glad to report that he is okay, obviously, and back in the field to play. Boy, that's nice defense right there by Brian Duncan. And Duncan, a young man who's been getting a lot of time under the new defensive coordinator, Ruffin McNeil, because he had done so well on special teams. And, of course, McNeil was a special teams coordinator. He's, he's put up a couple, a couple of young men because they were such good special teamers. That was an excellent play on the ball. Third down and five. Aggies need to take it to their own 30-yard line. 
Here we come with the option play. Goodson. Knocked down short of the first down. And defensively, that's Darcel McBath. Well, it looked as though he was going to take that thing and break it open for the first down and unable to get it. And now they've spotted it about two yards behind the line. And I think at this field position, you've got to punt it. Well, and think about that win. Yes. How much it was helping AM at the start with field position. Now you've got to figure it's going to start hurting them on a three and out. Well, you and got it may one be of the more guys than you'd hope for because it's beginning to gust. Well, they got one of the best, Jack. Uh, number 16, Justin Brantley. Certainly one of the best in the Big 12 Conference. And as soon as I brag on him, he gets one off the side of his foot. Wow, this is not going to go very far at all. A flag has gone down on the far side of the field as this has been blown dead at the 45-yard line, which would make it a 27-yard punt. called a penalty under those circumstances but uh, a flag of five yards grabbing the face mask on the part of number 17 who was Chris Parker so when we come back Graham Harrell can he have a stroke of magic on this next drive as he did on the last one we're tied at seven This presentation of college football brought to you by Best Buy. For a complete home theater experience, get HD done right at Best Buy. Aflac, ask about it at work. And Hummer, like nothing else. Boy, the state flag really flapping in the breeze there as uh, Jack reported just before that punt that it is beginning to gust even more here in the stadium. Right now, Texas Tech has that win to their back. But I think both teams need to keep an eye on that because in the fourth quarter, it could be the difference between winning this game or losing this game. Get into field position, especially. Yes. Both punters have good legs but can be a little inconsistent. We just saw that with Brantley of AM. Exactly. And he's a very, very good one. They go with the running play to Shannon Woods. Woods on the ground is going to take it to the 46 yard line. That's a gain of five. The numbers so far for Texas A&M, they've snapped the ball 23 times on offense for 152 yards. And for Texas Tech, 20 snaps for 135. So the average per play, 6.6 and 6.8. But you get a feeling, even though it's been evenly matched, that the momentum has swung over to the Red Raiders side. A little bit. It, yeah, yeah it, felt, it felt like it was all going Aggie way early, but... Uh, they missed field goal and, and they got a stop. They got a three and out. Ruffin McNeil got his guys going on defense and they played a nice series there. Second down, quick pass. That'll be enough for the first down. Crabtree. And let's check in again with Jack Aroop. And Rob, no question, the momentum has shifted over to the Red Raiders and it does go and start with the play of the defense. One of the things about this team is there's blue collar, last year and there was upper class well this year what they told us is everybody is tight the defense the offense they all work together they play together the one thing that Mike Leach says there's no separation here they're all in it the same and they played off at the offense off the play of the D okay Jack good job as far as the recruiting continues to get better here on the South Plains for Texas Tech and it's really showing Another running play. They're going to bounce it outside with Shannon Woods. Now, this is an interesting thing. In trying to make sure that the Aggies stay honest with what they're doing defensively, boy, pass play, then a run play, maybe another run play, and then here we go with another pass or two or three. Well, the first couple of series, Gary Darnell, the defensive coordinator for a and went almost exclusively with a three-man line, yeah. and I think exactly that is that right now Texas Tech is saying, all right, if you want to play soft and play off, we're going to make you start to come up. And, and they just want to get a chance to maybe take some shots over the top with the wind at their back. 
Second and five, and here we go with another running play. Close to the first down, but he'll be short by about a yard, and it'll be third down for Texas Tech. Lucas Peterson, or Patterson, I should say, a redshirt freshman out of Kingsville, Texas. And here is a young man that has a redshirt. The note that I have uh, from talking with Coach Darnell on Wednesday evening was coming on very strong. They really like him. Well, you've got to figure you're in two down territory here. So we were just talking about taking a shot, even though there's two deep safeties. And maybe try to bring them up with a, because the Tech's got a little run game going. Well, there's the first down. Mark Dodge makes the tackle on Shannon Woods. It was interesting when we were talking to Dana Holgerson, the offensive coordinator for Texas Tech. And we pointed out watching the film that Texas A&M almost always plays those two safeties deep. He said, yeah, they start at 15 yards, and then they get even deeper than that. I said, well, that makes you be patient. He said, you know, we sometimes struggle with that. We like to take some shots, but so far, Texas Tech is stuck to the plan. They're taking exactly what A&M is giving them on the front, especially. A&M shows blitz off the corner. It's picked up. Got a man wide open. Touchdown, number 27, Edward Britton. So Trelika tries to make it a 14 to 7 ball game and the only way that you can title this drive and what's happening with Texas Tech right now you have to use as a lead word patience because just what my colleague said what the Aggies have been giving them they've been taking at that time they bit off a big chunk 14 to 7 Red Raiders on top. So big doings tonight in Charlotte. Big doings this afternoon for this young man. Britton, the young fellow, is said to be the fastest of the wide receivers. And they kind of snuck him out there on the left side. Well, and L.A. Reed, who is one of the best all-around players on this team, both special teams and receiver, is out today with an injury. And yesterday we met with Coach Holgerson, the wide receivers and offensive coordinator coach. He said, we need something out of that speed. We haven't quite gotten the productivity we need out of Britton. He ran right by the coverage on that touchdown. Trelika with the kick. And with the win and the line drive kick, nothing to return here. And Franks very wisely says, let's take it at the 20. Well, Jack Aroot was talking about the maturation of Graham Harrell. Watch what Texas A&M does. They're bringing a full-on blitz from the boundary, which means you're going to have man coverage on this side. On this side, though, you've got a deep safety set back in Dixon. So Carpenter is just going to squat here. Watch how late the safety Dixon is getting over there because of the speed of the outside receiver Britton you can't be late on that and that was just an excellent read by Harrell and the protection allowed that you got the blitz off the boundary side it's picked up you come back to the other side where there's zone and you burn it deep Lane and Goodson in the backfield they hand it off to Goodson tries to turn the corner and he'll have two maybe three very tough yards Victor Hunter makes the tackle. And let's go to Matt Weiner in New York. All right, Ron, here's our nominee for the Pontiac game-changing performance. Iowa trying to hang on and finally get a Big Ten win against Illinois. Eddie McGee throwing. Brett Greenwood saving the day for the Hawkeyes, giving Iowa its first Big Ten win in its last nine games. Watch the season's best Pontiac game-changing performances all season long at ESPN.com. So final score, the Illini fall to Iowa. Here comes an option. McGee has five, has ten, counted off at 11 yards. And this will move the sticks for A&M and quiet this tech crowd uh, for the moment anyway. Jack Aroot. Well, Ed Cunningham, you were talking earlier about how the coaches have told Stephen McGee, try not to take so many hard hits. Well, the conversation went thusly with Dennis Francione and his star quarterback. The quarterback says, Coach, I understand what you're saying, but if I'm going to win the hearts and minds of this team, I've got to put my head down and run north-south just like Javorski Lane. 
Dennis Fanchione just shook his head and said, <laughs> okay. Let me tell you something about this young guy, Jack. He's going to graduate in three years. He's about as good a leader as you could ever find. He throws a completion to his tight end, and Bennett is tripped up as he approaches the 35-yard line. That's Joe Garcia, who was right there. But Stephen McGee is exemplary in so many different ways. Well, and he's already got his marketing degree, working on his graduate degree. He's got a season and a half left of eligibility, so he may get out of A&M with his graduate degree. And <laughs> the leadership, it is hard when these young men want to compete and you know you want your quarterback to save his body, but when he looks you in the eye and says, Coach, the other guys are doing it, why can't I? I, I don't know how you argue against that. No, I don't either. And I'm sure Coach would say, you can make those kind of grades, everybody else as well. It's a quarterback keeper, a design play, as they faked it to Goodson. Victor Hunter again making the tackle for the Red Raiders. Well, I did the Texas-Texas A&M game, the first start that Stephen McGee had when Reggie McNeil was injured. And he came in to meet with us before the game, and even though he was just a redshirt freshman, he car he had that air about him. He's you know? impressive, yeah, you're he right. just carries himself that way. And last year, through all the struggles, and the struggles now with the off-the-field things going on with Coach Franchoni getting a letter this week of admonishment from the department, you need guys like this to circle the wagons, and, and these guys really have. Javorski Lane in the game of tailback. In fact, he's the lone setback, and they'll give it to him. And he pounds his way at the left side. Doesn't look like much, but folks, it's four, almost five yards. And you just keep doing that. You not only pick up first downs, but you punish the defenders. We've got a Martellus Bennett. He's the leading receiver coming into the game at tight end for the Aggies. Martellus, the... A story well known for people in this part of the world, particularly in the Big 12 Conference. Played basketball his freshman year and was hoping that he'd be able to do that all the way through his career. And it just, the way things are in this day and time as far as 12-month workouts for, for both teams, whether you're football or basketball, is just a little too much to take. Two receptions for 21 yards this afternoon. And it looks as though, nope, we'll wait and see. We won't speculate as they help him up. Obviously, a leg injury. Yeah, the, the left leg, as you can see, he is a mountain of a man at 6'7, 255, played at A Leaf Taylor. I want to go back to, of course, uh, Jack Ritt was talking about all the things going on with Coach Franchoni and Bill Byrne, the athletic director giving him a letter of admonishment they had to take down coach Fran.com and he will be evaluated as all coaches are at the end of the season but this team has really gotten behind their coach they showed up at his weekly press conference a couple of weeks ago unbeknownst to him and they've really rallied around him and coach Fran said listen it's all about family my family my extended family and this team seems to be rallying around him option play Goodson turns the corner and I believe he got the first down well, here is the press conference that took place uh, earlier this week with uh, Coach Francione. And you can see he's a little bit shocked when he looks up and sees all the players. I do, in do not intend to discuss this matter any further. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, it's time to press on and get back to the business at hand. And just let me say again, you guys are the only thing that really matters to me in this thing. Bill Byrne, the athletic director, is in the booth next door. The Bill was kind enough to come over before the ball game started today, and we had a long conversation with him about everything that's gone on uh, this week at Texas A&M, and you know, he makes no bones about it. He, they were very, very blunt, very straightforward uh, at, at the, his press conference yesterday, and just what um, my teammate was talking about here, shut down the website, uh, issue a letter of uh, admonishment, Report the results of the internal investigation, the NCAA, and will be part of the Francione performance review. But I said, Bill, no one mentioned anything about do you love him? And he said, I don't want to give the kiss of death. But he said, you know, we're, we're not down on, on uh, Dennis Francione. Yeah, you got that feeling that uh, he has the support of his bosses. Here's McGee inside the 40. And it's very important to point out that... Uh, 
Bill Byrne and his staff did an excellent job and you can go on the, their website and look at all of the information that they got together. They got as many emails as they could from that VIP connection. They turned everything over to the NCAA and right now it looks like the only thing they have are secondary infractions. Talked about some recruits which is against the rules. They'll take away some visits to those recruits because of that off campus. But other than that they're looking at all secondary stuff. Second down and short. Goodson back of the ball game at tailback. And they give it to him. Goes to the left. Had one man to beat and ran into the cornerback. But he'll have the first down. Football came out and the officials, you could see him very adamant and saying, play was dead right here. And uh, Jack Arud, let's check with you again. Well, let's update you on the condition of Martellus Bennett. It was his left ankle. The athletic trainers have taped it up. They did not ice it. They never even took the shoe off. Now Martellus is just trying to run north, south, and see just how he can react on it. And thus far, checking the cutting, it looks as if he may be cleared and ready to go back out. Jack, this drive started back at the 20-yard line. It's the 10th play coming up. This time, the running play is not going to go for very much at all. In fact, nothing. It'll be a second down and 10. Goodson was the ball carrier. You know, 14 to 7 right now, Texas Tech on top. The kind of ball game that you have come to expect when these two ball clubs get together. I know Texas Tech leads 8 3 since the conference has come into existence, but boy, they've been tough, hard fought games always. Yeah, and, and if you're AM with this kind of drive, take your sweet time. Look at that play clock. Eight, seven, they'll get it down probably under five before they snap it. This is very smart. They swing the ball out to Goodson, 30, 25, tackled. Let's see, they will say at the 21 and a half yard line. It's 12 yards gained on the play, and again, the sticks will move. Good job by McGee, nothing downfield. Very quickly, get it over there. If you, if you don't see it, if you don't like the coverage, and you know you have the speed of Goodson out there on the swings, get it to him right now. Now, if uh, you want to start picking nits, as soon as you get that first down, maybe go down and slide, keep that clock going. I don't know if you <laughs> that, want to see the Red that, Raiders. Yeah, that's pick and miss. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, that's those, nitpicking. Those guys in black are pretty good on offense. <laughs> 12th play of the drive now. Javorski Land is the tailback. He is hit at the line of scrimmage, still fighting. And the young man's going to take it to the 20. He'll wind up with two yards, and he was stopped dead to rights at the line of scrimmage. Richard Jones, number 99, a sophomore out of Lamarck. Texas was there to make the original contact. Maybe not in this set of downs, but if AM were to pick up another first down, Texas Tech with all three timeouts, you should start thinking about maybe using those to save that clock for your offense when you get it back. It doesn't take them long to score, but if they if Texas AM can run it out and get a score, well then you're tied and don't get the ball back before the half. He's very deliberate as they come to the line of scrimmage. McGee. Well, now this is going to bring up a third down. Coming up on the Cooper Tires halftime report, John Saunders, Craig James, and Doug Flutie will have scores and highlights from around the country. I know that Craig James has a vested interest in the outcome of this one today. His young son, Adam, is... A reserve tight end on this football team. And this is not a good distance for AM. Third and seven. This is they're going to call a timeout. They don't like the personnel they have, but they're a little behind the sticks. This drive was going along very nicely, and then they got stuck in mud. So let's check the flag before. We go to the timeout. Might be an illegal substitution. They may have had too many men, and that's why they had to get the timeout. Prior to the timeout, substitution infraction on the offense. No men in the huddle. Five yard penalty. Still third down. Breaking the huddle with 12. Well, and we know that the field goal unit has had a hard time from 30 and beyond. And so now you get that penalty with the wind in your face. Ten, you've got to pick up 10 or 15 yards, I think, Ron, before you're comfortable with the field goal attempt. So we will be back in just a moment. 2.18 left until halftime. Tech by seven. Aggies threatening. 
so does this mean you uh, drop your embargo well I, ha I was it had to be someone who didn't touch the ball to make the list for me to acknowledge <laughs> it's a list but here's the problem Dick Buck Dick Buckus was at All-American Center at Illinois so he touched the ball on every yeah. play yeah. so I still have the embargo on that list So A&M, they used six minutes and 30 seconds on this drive. But the most important thing, we go back to what Ed talked about earlier. And the head coach had said, we can run the ball all day and use up clock, but we have to score. It is third down, and the line to make is down at the 12-yard line. Draw play. Goodson. Double teamed. He will not get to the 15. But they run it squarely in the middle of the field. Again, the ball came out, but the official adamant and saying, play is dead. It's Aggie football. Again, it's Darcel McBath defensively. And I don't like, I, I don't dislike this conservative call. This is not a drop back throwing offense. You've got a gusting wind into your face. You've been gashing Texas Tech with the run, pick up some yardage. But again, you're in that area where your kicking game has really struggled right at 50% from this distance so this is not a gimme into the wind. Szymanski going to attempt a 33 yarder from just outside the left hash. Boy, he missed it. Yeah he's really struggling. Wow. Well there's six points that Texas A&M have left off the board here in the first half and that quite frankly their offense deserves but the special team unit did not come through for them. Well I don't think you're going to beat Texas Tech especially when Graham Harrell's going the way he's going with field goals anyway. But you're going to have a really hard time beating them if you eat you get that much yardage and then walk away with no points. Now six for 13 on the year outside of 30 yards. You know that's a lonely feeling the kickers mm -hmm. they're either it's <laughs> just the, the king of the road or that scene that you see right there. That's the lonely one. So we'll see if Graham Harold is going to get ready to go to halftime or they're going to try to do something. They're going to try to do something and it's big time with Crabtree. He may take it the distance. 35 30 and pushed out of bounds at the 26 yard line by Devin Gregg. We talked about Michael Crabtree. Watch as he just comes across and it's great blocking down the field. It's just like a little inside screen, but he does such a nice job of setting up his blocks down the field. What excellent vision by the freshman. Harrell just throws that one at the feet. Oh boy, boy, boy. And Harrell is hurt and it was a late hit. And the referee did not pull out a, his uh, play pass. You all right? Well, and the coaching staff for Texas Tech to the man came flying off the bench. Watch what happens. He throws this one away. The play That's is over. That's a penalty. That's Von Miller, a true freshman. Ball was thrown away. You have a prone player. Absolute penalty. He drove his shoulder. If he would have pulled up and hit him with his chest, even if he would have knocked him down, they, it would not be a penalty, but because he drives the shoulder, ball's long gone. This should be a 15-yard penalty on Von Miller. So it's going to be second down and 10. Blitz coming right up the middle, throwing over the middle at the 10. Crabtree, it will be first and goal, Texas Tech from the six-and-a-half-yard line. And Graham Harrell giving Tom Walker, the referee, all he can handle in his ear, and I don't blame him. But what a tough guy to stand in there and fire it. As soon as he throws it, turns and runs right to Tom Walker. And we heard Tom Walker on his mic say, hey, are you okay? After he said incomplete pass. And I don't blame Graham Harrell. Well, and w what Mr. Walker needs to understand is he's the son of a coach and the grandson of a coach. And he's been around this game, and he knows he's not just whooping there. He took quite a blow. They go to the running play. Woods will take it to around the four-yard line. 
Obazor is the man who will make the tackle for Texas A&M. Clock runs at uh, now stopped at 35 seconds, and a timeout has been called by Texas Tech. Well, if you want to light a fire under a group at Texas Tech against Texas A&M, we all know there's some ugly history here in these games. Get a late hit and get Graham Harrell fired up with three timeouts now two. And let's go down to Jack. Well, Ron, you talk about the fact that he comes from that coaching lineage. The one thing that I was impressed with is as hard as he was hit, once he got his breath back, he didn't come up for a seven count. When he saw the trainers coming out, he popped up. Why? Because if they That's had come right. to him, That's right. then he would have had to miss one play. Yeah. That's a guy with guts. Well, and, and that's a guy who understands the game, too, Jack. You're right. There, there is no doubt that an entire team will rally around quarterbacks like Stephen McGee and Graham Harrell. Your quarterback should be the toughest guy on your team. And uh, to know to jump up and not take the attendance of the medical staff was a great play. Time is back in. Second down and goal. Harrell steps forward with an audible. They keep it on the ground again and spinning down to Shannon Woods at a timeout called immediately 29 seconds on the clock as Chris Harrington makes the tackle Chris talk about good bloodlines a junior played at St. Pius High School in Houston and his uncle is Dave Elmendorf who is upstairs a couple of booths down to our left Dave is the color analyst for the Texas Aggie radio network. And for those that are not from this part of the world, he was an All-American defensive back and played for the Rams forever. Chris Harrington, uh, I asked ask him before the game today, I said, hey, your sister's a good athlete too, huh? Good bloodlines. And he said, I'm not sure where things skipped in here. I don't know. I don't think she's a real good athlete. <laughs> He's up, but her son certainly is. And Harrington battled a shoulder injury last year. By the end of the season, his arm was just hanging worked his way back during the offseason and now for Texas Tech on third down still have one time out they can still run the ball here now let's see what they come up with third down and goal from a yard and a half away Crap tree up top great hands you can throw the fade you got one on one coverage up there on the top receiver and this guy can really catch it he's under center pitches it back got a blocker down Shannon Woods. Tries to make it a 21 to 7 ball game. He does. So Texas Tech with 21 unanswered points. With 25 seconds left until halftime. 21 7 Red Raiders. So we are back. 21 to 7 the new score and you remember Ed set it up here in the booth and uh, Jack when we went to him down on the sideline talking about when it appeared as though that momentum really shifted in this football game and it truly has right now is a very high and long kick is going to go seven yards deep and the Aggies will not return this one. Now we'll take a look at our Pacific Life game summary things started out great for Texas A&M they were moving the ball up and down the field and when you've got a guy like Javorski Lane and you're at the one foot line you hand it to him but then the momentum started to swing towards Texas Tech Eric Morris gets in the act Edward Britton and then of course the toss sweep into Shannon Woods and excellent blocking on the outside there by Michael Crabtree so Crabtree showing that he's not just a receiver he's becoming a complete wide receiver. 25 seconds on the clock and they'll give it to Gibson and that should be the final play of the first half. Well and coaches talk about the kicking game all the time. 
Two missed field goals, one with the wind, one against the wind, and it, instead of 21 to 13, you've got 21 to 7, and a lot of momentum going into halftime for the Red Raiders. So the Aggie offense deserved better, but uh, special teams and uh, the field goal kicker did not come through for him. Let's go down to the sideline. Jack Aroot. Coach, a 14-point swing and just a handful of minutes left. How do you get momentum back? Well, we just got to keep playing and doing what we do. And we were in this situation last year and had a good chance to win the game, and we just got to play our game. Last year, you admitted that you diverted from your game plan at the last minute. Do you stay tight now and just keep no, what you plan? I don't think we ever did last year, and I think uh, that's, that's what we got to do is just stay with what we do best. Thanks, Coach. All right. So Fran, Fran uh, headed to the sideline to go visit with his ball club, and I'm certain very, very disappointed in the fact that uh, they are down 21 to 7. They had an opportunity with a couple of field goal attempts and probably should have come away with even more than that, but that's how we stand. 21-7 at halftime. We are taking a timeout in Lubbock. 